In today's tutorial, I'm going to use Inkscape to show you how to create a very whimsical, organic looking, hand drawn sort of logo like you see here on my screen. And as you can see here, if you look at these lines, they look very, um, very whimsical and organic, almost as if like you um, put paint around the brim of a glass and stamped it onto a page. And I'm going to show you how to do this, as well as this text treatment to make it look like it's hand drawn. Um, in order to follow along with this tutorial, you'll need a font called Chunk 5, and I've included a link to that in the description. So go ahead and download that font and install it before we get started. And once you have it installed, open up Inkscape and we'll be good to go. So I'm going to close that out and we're ready to get to work. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make sure we're going to go to View, make sure we have Custom selected, and then we're going to come to our Align and Distribute menu. We're going to click that button to open up that menu. And from that drop down, make sure you have less selected chosen. And then we're going to go to the Edit Objects, Colors, Gradients, and Stroke, and we're going to open up that menu. And the first thing we're going to do is create some text. So let's click on the Text tool, and let's click on the canvas to bring up that cursor. And I'm going to use caps for this. I'm just going to write Logo. And then I'm going to go to the Text Editor up here, and I'm going to find that font, Chunk 5. There it is. Click Apply. We can close out of that, and we can go back to our arrow and hold Control and Shift in the keyboard and click and drag one of these handles to scale this thing up. We're going to make this thing about that big. And then we'll go to uh, Path, Object to Path, in order to turn that into a vector object. And then we're going to ungroup it so it becomes individual objects. And then we can click off of that to deselect everything. So the first thing I'm going to do is click on this letter L and then click it a second time to get our rotation handles. And I'm just going to tilt this thing off to the left a little bit. And I'm going to do the same thing with this, with the letter O. I'm just going to tilt this. I'm going to do that with all four of these letters. I'm just going to tilt them a little bit, just to give them a bit of a, a whimsical sort of look. Kind of like that. And the next thing we can do is we can click and drag over this entire thing, and we can unify it together by going to Path, Union. And then we can come up to this tab up here. We could turn that, we could turn the fill off by clicking the X button. And then we'll come over to the Stroke Paint tab and we'll turn that on by clicking the blue button. And then we'll come over to Stroke Style and I'm going to try giving that a 12 point stroke and see how that looks. Maybe a little less than that. I'll try 10. Okay, a 10 point stroke works. Uh, about the, You want it to be about this thick. So that should be what you're aiming for there. And for the cap, I'm just going to give this a rounded cap. And then I'm going to convert this stroke into a path. So I'm going to go to Path, Stroke to Path. And that is now, that stroke has now become a path with individual nodes that you can edit. So once you've done that, we'll go to our arrow. And actually, what we're going to do is let's go to our magnifying glass instead. Where's that magnifying glass? There it is. We can click and drag over the letter L. And let's come over here to this tool uh, called the Dip Pen. Uh, no, it's actually called Draw Callig uh, Calligraphic or Brush Strokes. We're going to click on that tool, whatever that is. And the tool we're going to use in that set is the Dip Pen. So click the Dip Pen. You want the width to be about 37. Thinning, you want that to be at 10. And all of these, var all of these variables should be set at how I have it here on my screen. And once you have it like that, you just come over here. And going in a diagonal motion, either left to right or right to left or whichever way, just make sure it's consistent all around. I'm just going to go ahead and click and drag and we're just going to scribble in we're just going to scribble in these lines kind of like that to make it look like it's um, kind of like somebody went in there with a, uh, like a, a like a dry erase marker or a pen kind of like that and actually we're going to come to the stroke tab let's turn the stroke off and let's go to the fill and turn that on so it should look, it should look like that and then I'm going to go over and do this to the letter O as well. I'm going to move the page over by pressing down on the mouse wheel. And that's going to let me pan the page over. So then I'm going to go ahead and color in this letter O the same way. This could either be uh, fun or it could be monotonous, depending on how you look at it. I don't know. I think it's kind of fun. And you may be wondering, uh, so what? I can do this in GIMP with a brush, or I could even do this in Microsoft Paint. Well, here's the thing. When you want to create a logo, it should be a vector before it's anything else. Meaning, if you're creating logos in GIMP or in Microsoft Paint, if you're creating anything in Microsoft Paint, really, you're doing it wrong. Anytime you create a logo, it should be a vector. And these lines right here, this, these little scribbles we're making, as you can see, if you go to the nodes, 
These are vectors. These all have individual nodes that you can manipulate and edit, as you can see there. So I'm going to undo that, go back to the arrow, come over here, and uh, you have to excuse, I'm glitching over here. There we go. I'm going to go back to the uh, calligraphy pen. I'm just going to go ahead and color in this letter G the same way. Just go ahead and scribble this thing in. And you don't want to like color it in all the way. You want to leave it like you, you want to leave some like blank spaces in there to make it look like it's you know colored in by hand. If you fill it all in, it's not gonna it's not gonna look right. You want to leave like a lot of uh, negative space in there, kind of like that. Come up here and do the same thing to the letter O. Finally. and scribble this thing in. Wow, I'm glitching pretty hard over here. This doesn't, you know what's funny? This doesn't happen when I'm not recording. I guess when I'm recording my screen, uh, stuff happens. So I'm gonna press one on the keyboard to zoom back out. And I'm gonna go back to the arrow. And I'm gonna click and drag over this entire thing to select everything. And I'm gonna bring the opacity on that all the way up. And then I'm gonna group that together with this button right here. And I'm going to turn this a dark blue, kind of like that, just to make it look like um, almost kind of like somebody took like a ballpoint pen and scribbled that in on a piece of paper. So that part is done. We could take that, we could hold Control and Shift and scale this thing in so it's about that big. And the next thing I'm going to do is create that circle line going around this. That'll be the next thing. So let's come over to the Create Circles and Ellipses tool. And let's hold Control and Shift on the keyboard and click and drag on the canvas to create a perfectly round circle, kind of like that. And then we will want to turn the fill off. We don't want any fill on this. Then we'll go to Stroke Paint. We'll turn that on. And for the stroke style, let's start off with um, a 25 point stroke and see how that looks. All right, that's pretty good. We can go over to the arrow and position this thing over here. I'm actually going to hold Shift and click on the word logo so I have them both selected and I'm going to center it on the vertical axis and the horizontal axis and then click off of that to deselect everything. And I'm going to take this circle, I'm just going to scale it in a little bit so it's not so, so there's not so much padding between the word and the circle. You want to put that about there. That's pretty good. And then uh, I'm going to zoom in on this thing actually. I'm going to hold control on the keyboard and use the mouse wheel to zoom in to show you what I'm about to do next. Okay, so with it like this, I'm going to go to the Edit Paths by Nodes tool so you can see how this change happens. I'm going to go to Path, Object to Path, and then I'm going to go to Path, Stroke to Path. And that's going to give us individual nodes here. And I'm going to click and drag over all these nodes, and I'm going to insert new nodes between all of these. So I'm going to come up here to this very far left where it says Insert New Nodes into Selected Segments. I'm going to click that once twice, three times, four times. Yeah, I'd say about four times is pretty good. You want about that many nodes. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna jitter these nodes. We're gonna move them around randomly. And we do that by going to Extensions, Modify Path, and Jitter Nodes. And for this, you wanna have, I think by default it uses a five point, a five point input, which is entirely too much. You wanna use one. So let's go to one here, one there, check all three of these boxes, and then click apply and then you will see on my screen what happens. It jittered all of those nodes and close out of that. It jittered all of those nodes to give it a more whimsical organic kind of look. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go to the arrow and I'm going to click on this and then I'm going to right click this and go to duplicate and I'm going to turn it white and then I'm going to go to path uh, inset and I'm actually going to do that a few more times, but instead of keep instead of going to uh, path inset continuously, I'm just going to hold Control and press nine, and it's going to do it again. I'll do it maybe one more time, uh, maybe one more time, kind of like that. No, nah, that's a little too much. Okay, so we'll make that like that, and then we'll go. To, we'll hold Shift and then click on the the uh, the black ring beneath it, and go to path difference. And then again, we could hit Control and 9 to inset that. And then we could hit Control and 0 to outset it to give it even more of a whimsical sort of look. I'm going to press 1 on the keyboard to zoom out. And then I'm actually going to turn this the same shade of blue that the word is to 
make it look like that. And then finally, I'm going to put little dots around this. So I'm going to come over here. Let's grab our magnifying glass and zoom in around here. Let's go to our, our circles and ellipses tool and hold Control and Shift and create a little ellipse. Let's turn the stroke off on that. We don't need that. We can go back to this. Let's scale this down. We want this to be pretty small. And then we can go to the Edit Paths by Nodes button. And we'll go to Path, Object to Path. And we'll click and drag over all four of those nodes. Insert new nodes. One, two, about two times. And then we can click and drag over all those nodes to select them all. And we're going to do Jitter Nodes again. So we'll go to Extension, Modify Path, Jitter Nodes. And then click Apply. And if you see what happened there, it made it look like a, almost kind of like a little ink blot, like you would, almost if you were to like take the tip of a marker and press it down on a piece of paper, which is kind of the effect we're going for here. Once you've done that, let's right click this and go to duplicate and hold control and click and drag this copy down here. And then we can hold shift and click on the first copy so we have them both selected and we'll group them together. And then hold shift in the keyboard and let's click on this ring and let's center it up on the vertical axis and the horizontal axis and click off of the graphic to deselect everything. Now let's click on just these, these two little dots right here and then click it a second time to get our rotation handles. And then we're going to hold control on the keyboard and we're just going to rotate this thing around because we want to make copies in all of these points. So let's bring it back to the starting position and press the space bar to make a copy. Bring it over two steps, press space bar again, one, two, space bar, one, two, space bar, one, two, space bar, and one more time. And for this last one, we don't have to press space bar, we could just leave that there and let go of everything. And then we can click and drag over this entire thing, and group it together. And as you can see, we're done. We've created a very simple, um, almost like a hand-drawn uh, hand style sort of logo. Obviously, the best way to make a hand-drawn style logo is to you know, take pen and paper or pencils and, and draw it out by hand yourself. But if you, you know, if you don't know how to do that or, or you'd rather just do this in Inkscape, this is another way to go about that. So if you have any questions, just let me know and I'll gladly help you out. And as always, thank you for watching.